Hello boys and girls, welcome to a new IB physics video. In this video, we will include chapter 8.2, thermal energy. Firstly, we will talk about the content in the textbook. In case you have already read the textbook, you may uh, skip this part and go to the second part about the questions directly. You all heard about conduction, convection and thermal radiation. Uh, so first of all, for conduction, uh, here is more well defined in IB. So the first definition here, you can look at the textbook, and basically what it means is an electron may collide on another electron, and their Ke will be uh, transferred from one to another, which uh, which means the conduction, direct contact. The second way is uh, imagine. Uh, the material or the uh, objects are, of course, they are made of particles, but imagine they are connected by the bond. Uh, well, actually, they are not really connected, but let's imagine uh, things like that. Then uh, if one of the particles move, then uh, you can imagine that the forces will be transferred and just like waves, they, the other one, the neighbor ones, would also be moved as well. So this is also the ideas of conduction as well. And uh, this is described as uh, the equation here. And if you look at the textbook, it already mentioned that, don't worry, it's not going to be in the exam. But um, I think it's still pretty good to look at the equation and try to uh, appreciate what it is. Uh, this is about the change of the thermal energy over time. Uh, will be proportional to the conductivity, the, the easier uh, the better conductor is, the faster rate it is. And also the greater area, then of course the faster thermal uh, transfer. And also if you look at L, which means the how far, how distant uh, the two objects are separated, then of course the third away it is the harder it will be transferred. And therefore, uh, and therefore uh, L is put as a fraction here. For convection, it's very simple. I think you can read it by yourself. For radiation, we will uh, explain more later on. Before we talk about the uh, black body radiation uh, in Stefan Boltzmann law, actually there are two parts. So here's the first part. Before that, we should uh, talk about uh, what you learned in IGCSE previously. So uh, if you try to recall that, uh, what about the uh, thermal radiation itself? It's simply about uh, they tell you quantitatively, sorry, qualitatively, that uh, you only know um, the trend is uh, for dull black material, it would absorb or emit the uh, radiation faster, uh, while for the shiny silver material, they will absorb or emit the radiation in a slower rate. Uh, but in IB, we want to calculate how exactly, how fast uh, or how slow it is. And therefore, we introduce you this law, this Stefan Boltzmann law. And uh, it is um, defined as this way, the power equal to the E times the stigma. Stigma, this is called stigma. And uh, times the A and T uh, to the power of four. So uh, for the first one, E, E, uh, would be the emissivity of the surface, which determined basically by the surface and the um, the color, basically uh, determined by whether it's dull black or shiny silver, uh, which uh, is going to be find out by experiment, of course. So here is a table, and also uh, there are some substances. Um, and as you can see, uh, more like uh, say eyes is very uh, shine, very close or similar to to shiny silver, and that's why the emissivity is very low. Uh, while for you know a perfect black body will be one instead. Uh, the second one is the stigma, which is uh, the Stefan Boltzmann constant. So you don't really need to care about too much about uh, like what it is. Uh, A is the um, surface area, very uh, obviously, uh, while T is uh, the temperature, but uh, don't forget to calculate as uh, four times, sorry, to the power of four. And then um, in the textbook, it said, uh, this is saying when they emit energy um, for a black body or for, for an object, if you already know uh, the the E. Um, however, if you want to calculate 
the net rate where energy leaves a body. Therefore, you may calculate how much it really emitting from that object and also how much that uh, body also receive, receive or absorb from the environment. Uh, you may wonder why. Hey, so uh, why do we still use the same E then? Why shouldn't we use, uh, say, uh, if the, in the environment is the air, then why, why shouldn't we use the uh, air for E instead? Because uh, this is the, the material, right? But uh, we should consider that we should actually use the same kind because think about is the dull black object or the shiny silver object determine the rate of absorption as well. So we, would, we should use the same E as well and of course the same A because it's the same object and therefore at last it will become this um, equation. Uh, here are two pages of the example which you can find in textbook. I think you can read it yourself. And also another example, make sure you, your temperature is in Kelvin. The second part of the black body radiation is about the wings displacement law, uh, which is concerning about the peak wavelength and the temperature relationship. Um, wings find out that um, the, I mean, we, we, we know that previously in RGCSE, most of the object well, actually, we told you that every object will emit infrared because of their temperature when, when they are above absolute zero, right? Mm -hmm. However, this is not completely correct because uh, if you look at these uh, diagram, we can see that for different uh, temperature, especially for the higher temperature one, they actually they emit visible light uh, as their peak value. It doesn't mean they don't uh, emit infrared, but the uh, they emit the visible light even more. So that is how uh, you see, that's also the reason why you see for uh, for the time when you heat up the metal, then you can see uh, it is uh, so-called the red hot. Or even if you think about the Bunsen burner, then uh, normally it is um, like yellowish or green, uh, orange in color. And then when you open the air hole, it looks, in, uh, it looks blue in color. And that is, uh, of course, is hotter, and you can see that it's due to uh, the the higher temperature, and it also match with our results if you look at the um, the graph here. So the relationship it is described as uh, this equation uh, is already in the data booklet, so you don't need to worry about it. But uh, the thing is, uh, is to identify the wavelength as the maximum or we should say the peak uh, wavelength uh, in the whole spectrum. So that means, that is to say, um, this is the color that you see or the, um, the highest intensity of the electromagnetic radiation that you emit. But it doesn't mean, uh, say for infrared, for ultraviolet, they also emit, but not as much. Uh, you can see there is a very, very complicated equation here, but you don't need, really need to worry about it. Uh, this is going to describe the whole curve, but, um, but what concerns you the most is uh, using this equation, the Wayne's displacement law itself only. Uh, I, I think this example is uh, very interesting that you see uh, how uh, our understanding, pi understanding about the human body uh, emitting the infrared is matching with the wings displacement law and while the, uh, the sun will be emitting visible light. And if you look at the textbook, then uh, you may find, oh, come on, what, what, what happened in these two uh, graphs? So let me try to uh, give you some assistance here. So basically on the left hand side, if you look at the textbook, it's talking about for um, three different trials on uh, three different temperatures. So when you have different temperatures, then of course, then you will have different uh, I mean, if you look at this equation, this equation, the Wings displacement law, then if you have different temperature, then of course the uh, peak value of the wavelength will be different. And for the greater um, temperature it is, you can see the wavelength is less. So uh, it matches with our result. 
while the second one is talking about they are having the same temperature which oh actually you can see here uh, while they have different emissivity uh, which is the E in the uh, in the previous slides so you can see that E is actually not included uh, in this wings di displacement law here and therefore you can see it doesn't really change it does not change anything here what it changes only the intensity of the lights that they emit because apparently this is talking about how much they absorb uh, and then and then uh, emit out now of course the uh, this this intensity will be affected but not the wavelength itself solar constant when we talk about solar constant is determined by this equation and basically what it means is the power per unit area that is to say uh, well if this is the earth this is the Sun then the Sun of course they radiate it radiates out the energy in all directions right so imagine Sun as a like a light bulb at your home that it goes in all direction and then the further away it is then uh, the energy will be less because if you think about this circle well maybe I use another color uh, the, the smaller distance this sphere of the this layer of sphere will have a greater intensity than than this sphere in going into all direction and therefore uh, simply it's simply that uh, looking at the equation then will be uh, power over the area 4 pi d square is the um, is basically the surface area of the whole circle of the whole sphere here from the Sun to the earth so that's why we use D here it's not about the surface area of the earth or, or the Sun It's about the distance which makes up which makes up a uh, the, the whole area here and then you 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 have that tiny tiny unit area that you receive all right so this is uh, the solar constant and therefore you can substitute the numerical value and find out it should be 1400 watts per meter square uh, and be careful that it is talking about the top of the earth atmosphere so that means it has not uh, consider the factor of the atmosphere itself whether or not it the thickness or the cloud or whatsoever it is when we talk about albedo is simply defined as the ratio of power uh, of radiation uh, reflected or you may say scatter over the power that it coming to uh, the that object so simply when you recall uh, scattering that is to say when certain particles has been uh, shined by the light they will of course they receive the energy however not all the energy will be reflected uh, but when we say reflected they reflect it in all directions so the better word to say is to say uh, scatter and some the, uh, the rest of the energy will be absorbed by that particle of course so the fraction is uh, defined it as albedo which the symbol is alpha here for example uh, the snow has a very high albedo and that's why when people go on snowboarding skiing they usually wear the sunglasses because this the snow is going to reflect a lot of light most portion of the light into your eyes and that will really uh, harmful for you if you don't wear the sunglasses and notice that by the way uh, it's a dimensionless lumbar for albedo because it's a fraction and if you also consider uh, the situation in Beijing currently uh, the air pollution will be in a very low albedo because uh, it actually scatter very little and absorb most of the light energy and therefore it makes the visibility very low and that's uh, that's why uh, it's very hard to see and of not to mention about uh, how it affect the breathing um, but anyway uh, if we if we look at the textbook it further put into the context of the earth again uh, 
uh, using the previous calculation that we find with uh, the solar constant 1,400 1, watt per meter square. Uh, we want to know exactly how, uh, how much it is because it was not uh, considered the fact about the atmosphere yet because it was the upper atmosphere and therefore if we consider the atmosphere then we should also consider the albedo of the atmosphere. So uh, when we talk about light shining on the earth, it's not the whole earth receiving the light energy, right? Uh, because obviously only half of the earth receive the light energy and therefore uh, you have to calculate it, the area received the light energy by um, only the disk, disk of, a, uh, of the area of the earth and therefore we pi r square and don't forget s is the intensity and therefore if you look at the the units then you you you, you easily understand uh, what it means by this equation um, and since we we still want to know the intensity on uh, average uh, on well the intensity that means the power on each unit area and therefore we need to define we need to divide the area by the whole earth because uh, here what the textbook did is um, is to consider the whole earth um, as one system and that is to say um, no matter where you are and what time it is whether you have flight or not uh, that's the energy per meter per meter square that uh, we are gaining and the reason why we use one minus uh, alpha here is because albedo is talking about how much it reflects and while we when we say how much it absorbs then it will be 1 minus albedo uh, that is the total uh, absorbed power over the total incidence power and therefore we find out uh, the average intensity will be this one in the next part of the textbook energy balance is um, more about an ideal case when we think about the if the temperature is constant if the temperature is constant okay so therefore uh, well we're talking about what you learn in this chapter simply when when an object is in a constant temperature that is to say the energy gain and well energy input you may say energy input and the energy output is having the same rate right that means uh, like okay now I give you $100 and then you somehow spend $100 at the same time then you you gain nothing and that's how you 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 keep the constant temperature right so in this case uh, ideally then will be the energy or the intensity received by the earth will be same as the one that they it radiated back to the space um, I think the idea is very simple uh, but then I would really strongly suggest you to try the following example um, and then check up the answer and uh, once again don't forget there's assumption saying uh, we assume the earth has a fixed temperature uh, so here are the answers that you can find from the textbook. I think the main thing that you should uh, notice is uh, the power output. It will be using this Stefan Boltzmann law. So this is a connection between uh, the albedo and the Stefan Boltzmann law here. If you look at the answer of part B, and if you if you know how to calculate, or right, that's one thing. But the second thing that you should think about is. Uh, apart from the answer which is negative uh, 17 degrees Celsius is consider the earth is more like uh, 288 K which if you consider uh, in degrees Celsius then it will be like 15 degrees Celsius which is like the normal uh, overall temperature of the whole year on most of the places in average on earth so um, why is that the case then I mean you all know about global warming and you know the average is going on and on and on every year uh, although there are some fluctuations but then how is how would these really like much bigger than the estimated one negative uh, 17 degrees celsius is 
uh, to think about, hey, uh, probably the Earth receive more energy than, than we thought, or, um, or the Earth actually emits less energy than we thought. So that's why uh, the actual, actual temperature would be 15 degrees Celsius. So uh, for the detailed explanation, you may also have a, have a read here. And also, um, don't don't think that although although I said like this is uh, not very accurate, but but then it's still uh, not off by the order of magnitude, so it's still pretty good I would say. Um, but then you can see uh, here is the appreciation on the simple model that is uh, also appear in your chapter three in the thermal. Um, transfer which is about the kinetic model of the ideal gas law so uh, physicists usually make this kind of uh, simple model and and of course we ignore a lot of uh, factors but then it helps us to predict uh, when we think about other planets so the is the idea itself um, matter but uh, it will be a useful tool when we uh, think about the astronomy as well. I'm pretty sure you all know about greenhouse greenhouse effect uh, in in other subjects. And in physics, uh, our perspective is to look into the greenhouse gases and the ideas of why they are greenhouse gases because they radiate uh, the infrared in all directions. What it means is uh, the scattering itself. However, since uh, scattering is in all directions, so those who go downward here will, will be um, going back to the Earth. So in that case, uh, the radiation did not go out to space, and that's how we uh, kind of trap the heat on Earth. And think about when those um, industrial um, or whenever you use electricity, or whenever there is uh, most likely whenever there is um, energy conservation uh, the energy would transfer at last be becoming the uh, thermal energy and then that's where uh, we get more and more thermal energy and less uh, the other kinds of energy um, and therefore we get hotter and hotter and that causes the global warming for the mechanism, I think you can read it by yourself. It's more or less like what I said in previous slides. And also, I strongly recommend you to uh, think about the work example here. So all in all, we cover the content. And here are four equations uh, from the data booklet. And these are annotated. So just in case you want a summary, short summary, and here you go. Um, when we look at the whole study guide, you can see uh, make sure you you know um, this terminology and also um, the basic skills that we cover here um, which will be later on assessed by the questions okay so for the first question uh, it's pretty simple and don't overthink the question itself uh, it said there is a hot object and cold object and connected by the tube x and y and state whether uh, they have the same rate of flow of energy through uh, x and y and it is it is uh, the same energy has to be conserved because uh, simply energy gain equal to uh, energy lost that's the energy conservation itself uh, so therefore the energy transfer is the same at all time however the temperature difference would be dif uh, would not be the same across x and y so uh, that's due to they have different thermal conductivity or you may consider the uh, thermal capacity as well. Um, I think thermal capacity should be the actual word, should not be conductivity, it should be the um, uh, specific heat capacity you may say or heat capacity you may say. Uh, just simply think about uh, in an extreme case, all right? So let's say in an ocean, well, I had a container for the ocean, so here is an ocean and you know uh, it's made of water, seawater, well, it's very close to uh, 4,200 
uh, for specific heat capacity. Um, that's the joules per kg per uh, degree Celsius, right? So uh, if you put a metal inside, a very hot metal inside, then then um, you you can imagine that the changes of the seawater will be very very minimal, will be like nothing, right? While the metal would with the hot metal will be um, very soon uh, go to the to the to the temperature of the seawater. So this is the idea itself um, that the temperature difference would not be the same. Next question asks you about uh, whether or not there is any point, any reason uh, using a, a ceiling fan in winter. And I guess uh, it's not going to be any question that appear in IB exam, but uh, I think it's pretty interesting to think about it. Um, and the, the answer that you can see from the publisher is say uh, there is, there is a reason. And this is going to send the warm air at the top, as you know about uh, convection, right? The hot air will go up and while the uh, cooler air will be at the bottom. So uh, if you put a ceiling fan at the top, then it can help you to push the hot air downward. But um, that's, that's the theory itself. But uh, if, you, if you want a practical answer or practical point of view, then uh, in winter, I mean in winter, right? So you, you want to keep yourself warmer. I mean, from your personal experience, you know that staying staying um, within a fan, like blowing area is not like, something good for you. You definitely feel cold. Um, well, what, what is said is uh, is actually correct, right? Well, I mean, pushing the hot air downward is, is correct. But the thing is, um, how a person keep uh, himself or herself warm is is because, you know, the, the person radiating out the infrared. And what happened is, or also by conduction as well, it uh, heats up the air nearby. Or it's more about the air nearby you and normally if you are not moving you, if you feel warmer that's because the air near you are not moving as well and then when you heat up the air um, the air around you is warmer right so if you put a, a ceiling fan above you and then it keep keep turning and then what it does is to get the air nearby to that you 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 put your hard earned energy on it to warm them up and then they they just push it away by the fan it's not very nice for you it, it will be very cold for you and you what you're gonna do is to re reheat the new upcoming air particles again so that's why you feel cooler so um i don't really think that is too much point to 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 use a ceiling fan unless you're saying okay I'm I'm not going to stay under the fan but uh I, well unless your home is pretty big then probably the airflow is still going to affect you uh which pushes the air um near your body so I don't think it's a good idea anyway. The previous question uh, reminds me of a very classical question in physics. Uh, that is to say, um, imagine there is a refrigerator, of course, uh, powered by electricity, uh, is put in a completely sealed and isolated room. That means there is no uh, heat transfer from that room to the uh, outer world. Then uh, the question is, if I open the door of that refrigerator, would the room itself, the room temperature, uh, get warmer, or would it have no change, or would it get uh, cooler uh, at last? Well, let's say for uh, after 10 hours, what do you think? Uh, please comment below and tell me what you think. 
Next question is very simple. It asks you the ratio of the intensity uh, between two black bodies and different temperature. So uh, what you need to do is to recall the Stefan Boltzmann equation, this one, and you will find out the ratio is actually having uh, the first three items the same because you know they uh, suppose uh, well you assume they are the same uh, same thing. Uh, with different temperatures actually. So uh, the only difference is the temperature and that's why it's um, by power of 4 in terms of ratio, not directly 3 but by 3 to the powers of 4. Uh, you can read it by yourself for question 29 and I think the only thing I want to add is uh, the radiator power per unit area, that is to say the intensity that it emits uh, is sigma t to the power of 4. Um, we can also mention that the emissivity is uh, 1.0 for a perfect black body. So um, if if this is a perfect black body then, then it appears black and then absorb all the radiation and reflects none of them. Uh, for part B, I don't, well, I think, I think piece of charcoal is okay, but uh, I don't understand what it means by the later part of the sentence. Part C is very simple to question 28, but uh, be careful that the question is in degree Celsius. So uh, your answer, your calculation should consider this and add 273 into it to change it to Kelvin scale. Question 30. Um, question A asks you why the temperature of the two bodies are the same in the uh, graph above. So what you could see from the graph is uh, looking at the maximum wavelength, uh, or the peak value I should say, peak intensity uh, is wavelength. So uh, by Wings displacement law, you you, see, you know that is the peak value, peak uh, wavelength times temperature T equal to a constant. So therefore, since they have the same uh, wavelength of the peak value, then um, the temperature is the same. So I think you should quote. Well, no, don't don't fully follow this. I think you must quote this, uh, the name of the theory. Okay. So in part B. It asks you, uh, well, it assume, it tells you to assume that the upper line, this one, is a uh, is a black body, is a perfect black body. So what it means is E equal to uh, one, emissivity equal to one, and it asks you to calculate the emissivity of the other body, the, the lower one. So since you know it's the ratio, how much it uh, absorbed and how much it reflects. So basically, you look at the uh, peak value again you look at the intensity and you find out uh, how it's how much is supposed to received in total well of course that is uh, 1.9 here that's the total that it uh, received and then um, and then 1.1 is the one that it emits so uh, something like albedo here then you can find out is 0 0.6 so for this one the e for this one is 0 0.6 Question 31, I think uh, if you look at the answers, uh, you may understand quite directly. But I think I want to point out uh, the question itself. Um, the assumption is actually important. It says, assume the body radiates into a vacuum. Vacuum is a key word. Uh, at a temperature 0 K. The reason why we need we need uh, the assumption here is because uh, when you recall the power again, the uh, Stefan Boltzmann law, E sigma A T uh, to the power of 4, it's talking about how much, how fast it, you emit. Uh, but then if you are at certain surrounding, then you should minus the E sigma A uh, to the temperature of the surrounding to the power of 4. Um, however, in this, in this question, since it is vacuum and also 0k, that means um, the absolute 0. So basically the whole thing is 0. So that's why you can ignore that. And therefore, uh, the temperature of the body can be calculated directly, directly by the Stefan uh, equation. You just simply substitute all the things inside. Question 32 is pretty interesting here. Um, so what it says is, 
uh, when let's say if the distance between sun and earth decreases then what will happen to the uh, temperature of the earth so um, the question already tells you that if uh, it changed then the power radiated by the sun I think I think the fraction is a redundant word here would be proportional to uh, 1 over d squared that is the so-called um, inverse square proportion inverse square inverse square law that you find in uh, quite a lot of places you should heard about it um, and then uh, the power radiated by the earth is proportional to t uh, to the power of 4 that is what you learned in the previous pages and then now it actually determines the um, relationship between them so basically you can write up this equation and then uh, because these are constant and therefore um, you find out 1 t will be proportional to uh, 1 over square root of d and then uh, for part b it asks you say uh, if the initial condition is the distance decreased by 1% and then how would uh, the temperature change given that the initial uh, before you change the initial temperature is 2xxk so it's uh, like what is said here is uh, quite similar to the propagation of uncertainties um, and of course here the calculation is, com is not completely 100% um, uh, accurate but here is the approximation here that if you want to calculate the change of temperature then you can uh, see looking at the equation here since this is uh, 1 over square root of d so it's basically d to the power negative 1 over 2 and when you consider the uh, error propagation here you basically you times 1 over 2 here you can ignore the negative uh, basically you times 1 over 2 here and therefore the change for the temperature will only be half of the change of the distance that is uh, 0.5 percent and therefore uh, the new temperature uh, I mean the change of the temperature will be 1.4 K that is pretty little and after all you may ask Mr. Wong ask me that uh, hey come on what, what is the point to calculate this uh, the distance of Sun and Earth will not suddenly change right um, it's not really true if you think about this if you think about the uh, orbit between Sun and Earth is actually not a circle it's an ellipse um, and therefore therefore if you check up the information uh, well, it's not a very good practice but um, because I'm pretty lazy so I check up the Wikipedia directly and then you can find out the distance between uh, in two different times say January and July uh, they have different distance um, in certain years it's actually changing as well uh, over the years but anyway uh, let's take it uh, assume this is correct and then you can find out the percentage change in distance in, in, in this half year would be like 3% so in other words if you use the result here and uh, since we calculated uh, 1% originally so say now it's 3% then uh, the temperature change should be 4.2 K so that is to say if the uh, factor of the distance is going to I mean this is a factor to affect the uh, temperature right between uh, uh, January and July the changes should be 4.2 and that is the usual reason that people think I mean those people who did not study physics think that oh that must be the distance uh, between the Sun and the earth affecting the season and that causes the temperature drop or increase that is actually not correct if you think about uh, well let's say in uh, any country that you live in I don't think the temperature between your summertime and the winter time could be that little could be 4.2 K only 4.2 degrees Celsius only 
I don't think so. It's it's about something else. So I will leave it for you to uh think about it. So please comment below and tell me uh what do you think about the temperature change in uh different season or well, simply say uh summer and winter. Why there will be such a big change in temperature? Question 33 is very simple. Uh, a is a definition. Uh, you should you should be able to recall that. And for B, you firstly calculated using the Stefan Boltzmann law to find out the uh, usual power by a naked human body. And and then um, if you want to calculate the intensity for five meter away from the body, then you you got to use this equation. Question 34 is more about a definition problem that we actually discussed before. So uh, part A is asking you to deduce intensity again uh, from the power. So uh, the main point is the distance itself, that you imagine this is the source of power and then it spread out the energy into all directions. So if you measure the power at these, these distance, these distance, these are equal distance, it's a radius, right? So the uh, the imaginary sphere will be having a surface area of this two four pi uh, d to power of two because uh, simply you know the uh, surface area of a sphere is two pi r squared. So um, yeah, that, that's the uh, inverse square law actually. So you can visit this link if you want more information. It actually applies to any kind of intensity whenever you spread out the energy. So uh, for part B is uh, asking you the assumption. So here is to say uh, the radiation is uniform and in all directions. So one kind of example would be like uh, say for um, say for light bulb. Uh, actually, uh, the usual light bulb is like this, right? So, uh, if you consider light bulb as as a whole, as a whole, then then obviously down below around around this area, there should not be any or very little emission of intensity. So, it's not in all direction. Or or uh, if you think about a uh, loudspeaker. A loudspeaker then oh, I'm not very good at drawing a loudspeaker then uh, the sound that it emits is not in one direct not in all direction it's actually in in certain direction actually so um, if you talk about in along along this area then yeah that that's that's correct but if you talk about something else about the area outside of this cone then it will not be correct Question 35 is uh, pretty simple. If you uh, have listened to me in the previous slides, uh, what you got to do is to apply the Wing's displacement law, uh, wavelength times t equal to a constant, and then uh, for part a you can find the new temperature. That means for this uh, new, I mean these curve, the temperature is at 450k, and um, for part B, ask you to draw a new curve with a new temperature of 600 K. So if you look at the equation, then you see if temperature increase, then uh, wavelength, the peak value would decrease since uh, the whole thing it should be a constant. So what you do is uh, to choose a, a, a smaller peak value. So if you try to draw something like this, that will be wrong because although your peak value is actually less but then you should also consider the higher temperature will give a higher intensity all right at all time at all time so therefore what you should be drawing should be something like this instead at all time is greater than the lower temperature one. And you can see that obviously the peak value is having less, uh, a smaller wavelength and then taller at all point. Um, I think you can read it for yourself.
for uh, 36 and for part B I think the question is uh, is cheating on you because uh, the question asks you about a surface and the answer here is describing of a planet so it's not very fair for you but uh, anyhow you can see that the factor could be cloud how much cloud cover in the atmosphere if you want more information I have uh, I've put a picture here for you that is from again from the Wikipedia but then uh, you can still see that for different cloud these are actually the name of the cloud that uh, they have different albedo uh, well of course it did depending on it's depending on their altitude and also the density as well and of course obviously the more dense cloud uh, it is the, the more uh, light they would be absorbed and um, well other factors on the planet will be the ice and also the water of the survey and don't forget the color what you learn in IGCSC and the nature of the soil itself 37 again spell explanatory uh, I think the main point is to talk about uh, is to specify the radiate radiated energies in the infrared uh, electromagnetic wave and uh, the this radiation is going to be returned because of the re radiation that means scattering uh, back to the surface of the earth well, question 38, uh, the energy flow chart is uh, similar to the figure on uh, 8.20 actually. So what you're going to write is the incoming is 350 and then uh, the one absorbed is 250 and then uh, the reflector is 100 simply minus uh, these two. And then the albedo can be calculated by the fraction. Uh, for C is actually not very well designed this question it should tell you the uh, temperature is assumed to be constant and therefore the one that you receive is the same as the one that you radiate back to the space which is 250 as well uh, maybe it's because it's a without an atmosphere I don't know but um, I think it should be more it should be clear right in the question anyway um, I think part D is more uh, controversial if you look at the answer I asked you to use this Stefan Boltzmann law and then uh, the question say you should you you well they assume uh, the earth as a black body which is definitely not um, and then uh, by simply calculating that then and also assume e equal to 1 in other words then you can find the answer 258k uh, as the temperature of the earth but then they tell you hey you should not uh, assume is uh, the earth as a black body um, otherwise there would not be any radiation to be reflected then I don't understand the whole point of their calculation then then in other words your calculation should not actually treat uh, ES1 uh, I would say the best estimation that you could make is to say um, the emissivity as 1 minus the albedo uh, alpha which means uh, 0 0.71 and then you can substitute this into the calculation here and find the new temperature okay however uh, in the previous question I asked you to do uh, like treat emissivity equal to 1 minus albedo is that really correct if you check up the textbook it did not say that so how about you go on Google and try to search answer for me just maybe for one minute if you go straight to the uh, Google and type uh, emissivity albedo relationship or uh, simply the first two words you'll find uh, the links here I've visited uh, most of them 
and then if you check the first one then you will see you find uh, the website called the physicsforum.com and then there is a guy called Andy he said uh, albedo is reflection so uh, these two add together with one and the other guy agree um, however I don't I'm not very satisfied with this so I, I further find more information and I find the later information when I check further information on that I find uh, a more reliable much more reliable uh, uh, scientific journal from uh, this guy and his teammate I don't even know how to pronounce his name Ralph or something like that in 1987 uh, if you're interested you can click this link and I think uh, you can read the whole journal but uh, the basic idea is uh, they also agree that emissivity and also the albedo can be uh, treated as uh, 1 minus emissivity equal to albedo however in the uh, practice is somewhat not exactly the same you can see uh, a more like sophisticated uh, calculation uh, is needed here but uh, they said uh, is quite often and usually assume they are the same so I would say um, it's okay but uh, I don't think we should say they are equal if you are interested to know like how exactly uh, different they are then I recommend you to further on to read this journal question 39 is uh, somewhat complicated as you can see and don't be so afraid that you can't do this and but I really appreciate if you can at least try to formulate the equation uh, there are three equations that you will see later on so uh, first of all uh, what you could see from the question is um, you should be able to identify the one going to the earth is 1 minus alpha uh, times s over 4 simply because uh, this is the one reflected and after that you can see uh, all this reaching the earth uh, are in one group and they will be equal to the one leaving to the earth that means uh, I1 here and therefore you can write the first equation so um, that is uh, an assumption of having unchanged temperature as well um, of the earth itself so uh, the next part is to consider the uh, the intensity 1 I1 going to the atmosphere again that uh, it spread into um, alpha and 1 minus alpha first times uh, I1 and these will contribute for 1 minus alpha this one will contribute to I3, I2 and this I2 and that's why you can write this equation here uh, which they equal to each other for the last one is using an assumption from the question itself is that only a fraction of T of the energy radiated by the earth uh, which is T1 sorry I1 actually escaped the earth um, so I was thinking whether or not the solution here is correct and I believe it should not because if you look at the picture again the one escape from the one radiant from the earth disregard the, the left hand side one but then if you look at the right hand side this part it should be T I3 and I2 at the same time so I would say um, it should be I2 plus I3 equal to T times I1 instead but um, if we do it in this way then the whole question the uh, the one that he wants you to show would be different of course so I'm not going to change it and find the new answer but then um, I would expect you at least I hope you can do up to this level and finding out this free equation all right so I think at least according to your physics knowledge you can at least do these three uh, one two and three these three and after that what he does in the solution is simply algebra which uh, eventually gives you this uh, based on 
based on this, based on I3 equal to TI1. But then I think uh, algebra is not really our focus, so I, I, I think it's very legit that you can skip this part. <clears throat> part B, C, D is somewhat even more weird to me. Uh, let's say for part B, uh, it said uh, show that as much energy enter the whole system of atmosphere, atmosphere system as it leaves as leaves it that means uh, energy gain equal to energy lost so I don't really see in part B what's the point of putting all this calculation here if we already assume the energy of I mean the temperature of the earth or the whole system is going to be unchanged which we uh, we made in part A um, well, otherwise we can't calculate part A and well, anything of part A, right? So that's that's how we assumed the temperature change is zero, and then by the idea simply by the ideas of conservation of energy, then of course energy gain equals energy lost. Then of course it will be S over four uh, when the intensity uh, leaves it. So I don't really see the point of doing all this uh, tedious calculation here. Anyway, for part C is simply um, calculation by substituting uh, what you get from part A I1 equal to the Stefan Boltzmann equation. However, the thing I feel weird is uh, the E. Don't forget there is an E. E sigma A T to the power of 4, right? So, um, I don't really see the, uh, well, well that, that's a power, so A should be on the other side. So A could be put here, that would be uh, the intensity. But then, where does the E go then? E is the emissivity, right? So, in this question, if the if the offer assume it is uh, equal to this, then it's saying E will be 1. That is to say, assuming the Earth is a black body, which is extremely weird. And also consider the fact that in part D, it asks you to calculate the, uh, I mean, to, to derive the equation of emissivity then it's saying that it's not equal to 1 so is I find it very very contradictive well <laughs> let's assume C in part C uh, he already made such assumption and then we move on to part D that uh, and if I if you if you look at the solution that's what it said and I don't really understand and believe that is true uh, in the previous slide we already mentioned that the approximation should be e emissivity equal to 1 or 1 minus uh, alpha the uh, albedo so where is this negative minus t go well think about t is like 0 0.5 something then it's a huge number it's not something that very small that we can get and if you try to understand the logic here is saying that um, the incident intensity will be i so I, i've already written down uh, i here and then uh, the one being absorbed and radiated is ei so that is to say uh, the one re radiated so I suppose it would be going in all direction, right? We radiated. And then uh, the one being reflected is alpha i, which is here, uh, which is still matched with the original with s over 4. Uh, but then he said uh, the amount of ti will be transmitted. So, so here is probably ti, right? And that is the total intensity which eventually gives uh, to support the, the, the later on uh, radiation. 
so it i feel quite weird so where what do you mean by the transmitter one and the uh absorbed one then do they why i don't understand why they he separated these two and the only way that could make this question more like valid is to say okay um since this is i this is alpha i then the total um intensity going through i mean the one is not reflected one is one minus alpha i right the non-reflected one and this non-reflected one is contributed to the one which is absorbed and we radiated e and the transmitted t that's why he, he used t i guess and then uh, eventually this could could uh, give the same equation as as the uh, the one he he has written here then i i still don't feel it very convincing though so uh, please let me know if you have uh, any further ideas about this for d2 is simply using the result and it's not much arguable that you just use the result uh, assuming d1 is correct then you substitute all the figures and you'll find the temperature of the atmosphere which is um which is uh slightly lower temperature than like colder than the surface temperature which which makes sense but um it's based on all these uh doubtful doubtful deductions so let me know if you have any ideas about this uh question 30 spell explanatory uh the main main one is uh, radiation for question 41 i don't have much to comment about i think for a is uh better for you to look at the link here and you can have more ideas about uh the albedo between the ocean and the ice and therefore you have more ideas 42 is about the rate of evaporation which you learn in igcse so uh there are different factors uh here the one uh, the main factor is the temperature itself so simply uh, think about the temperature of water since uh, they are higher in the tropical and the uh, kinetic energy average kinetic energy of the water particles will be higher so they will have uh, more chance to collide with each other and uh, the particles may have even higher chance to have enough kinetic energy to escape from the water surface that's what you learn in IGCSE and of course uh, there are some other uh, some other factors such as uh, the wind speed and also um, the humidity as well so uh, it really depends on how you uh, interpret the, the question and of course I think the temperature is uh, the dominant factor here 43 i think you can uh, read the solution below uh, basically you need to identify the arrow size and you see b is larger in both evaporation and conduction and then you can see um, the explanation below the last question is very simple you just calculate the uh, by like the weight of value of uh, what you learn in maths then you find the average uh, albedo and new albedo and you see the change and you can calculate the expected change in terms of temperature thanks for watching